Hello everyone, Pally Tuff here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. We find our party inside of the Underdark still. This is the Grimforge area. This is the other side of the Trap Gauntlet that we cleared out in a very recent episode. And the very same place that we found the Shield Splint to make the shield that Gale isn't showing off at all, but is wielding so we've been here before but there's more that i would like to do if we follow this path off to the left you may see this staircase to the north we did not go down here last time we're going to use gale and his feather fall to allow my entire party to descend gracefully there's an item over here that i need <laughs> okay Maybe jumping straight on the ooze wasn't the best idea, but there's an item in here that I'm going to need if we want to free True Soul Near. So this is our attempt at getting it. If we can get by these oozes, I also didn't save yet. So this is, this is pretty sketchy. The ooze directly next to Gale has 52 HP. Now everyone still has Feather Fall, but if I jump down like this, I'm using my bonus action, which is a very big deal for my monk. I won't be able to use my Flurry of Blows where a lot of my damage comes from. Our Stunning Strike is a wisdom check and these guys don't have very good wisdom. Let's see if it works. All right, there you go, buddy. He won't be bothering you anymore. I'm going to just whack him after that stun as well. That uses some of our key points for it, and it doesn't land very often. Oh, it's a con save. I was wrong. I thought it was a wisdom save. Oh, and he has 14 con constitution as well. Well, okay. With that being done, I do think these guys are in a bit of a bad spot. If they're gonna be moving up to attack us, I kind of wish I could hold my action. I'd love to do a cloud of daggers to really catch these guys and punish them. I could use a fireball, that, but that feels like it's a bit overkill. I'm gonna put a cloud of daggers just in their main path because I know they're walking this way. Let's punish him for coming to us. Astarian up on the high ground is going to fire down with his ranged weapon, continuing to focus damage into the into the uh, jelly that is stunned. And we're going to see the Lazel come crashing down gracefully as well with that feather fall. Her swing connects for um, a lot. <laughs> that creature's dead. Let's pull out our ranged weapon and fire one off at the ooze down here doesn't say path is interrupted. I'm going to take it. Bexar, thank you so much for the 19 months. Thank you for your support. Cloud of Daggers doesn't do much damage. And the slime makes its way forward. It's going to try to attack Lazel. We could use some cutting words to try to make it miss. And that's exactly what we did. The next of the uses is, is going to attack from range. We're going to use shield to protect Gale. And the Cloud of Daggers does five damage as the creature begins to move through. We are going to see Kalark move up with a toppling attack. Honestly, we could double stun here, and I don't think that would be too bad. No, let's do a toppling attack. We could just outright kill this thing. It is prone, which gives us advantage on our follow-up swings. And that is a one-turn KO on to the ooze. We'll go ahead and end his turn. We don't need to concentrate on this any longer. We will pull out the fire bolt on Gale and deal 17 damage to the ooze directly next to us. That'll end his turn. Astarian from the high ground shoots his short bow, deals eight damage. And now the heavy hitter Lazel steps up. 70% chance to hit. She connects one H two HP short. That's all we need. Let's go ahead and turn off that just to make sure we do connect. All right, this ooze wasn't the real prize, but everything inside is coming along with me. What we're after is up the ramp to the east. There's a small area we're gonna have to jump across. And the last few times I've been here, I've royally messed this area up. So fingers crossed we get it right today. Religion check? Anybody? 
Anybody? I thought we rolled here. I need to rest. The sunset can't come quickly enough. Need to rest? We have two short rests. Why are you whining? And where's Lazel? <laughs> uh, we're going to probably have to use a Starion to get this door open. Are my Githyanki agreeing with me now? It looks like they are. Very intricate design on this door. Very cool looking. We only need a 10. We rolled an 18, rolls up to a 27. We pop this door open immediately. Okay. Inside, we see a small gnome standing next to a rune powder barrel. Trust no one. We might need the face of the party to talk something down in here. Starion approaches first. I swear to Iron Hand, one more step and a blow is to trunks. An ashen scent fills the air. The barrel is filled with smoke powder. Chuck. The gnome's well and truly mad. Chuck. Shut your mouth, Hoon, or I'll shut you down. This is when we cast like sleep <laughs> and just totally de, de escalate this situation. Hey, calm down, calm down. Let's talk this through. What's to say? Your near's bootlicker saw you sailing. A god's damn true soul. Better to die in this shit eat than rot in moonrise. You want me? Come get me. I haven't done anything with Nier. In fact, we're in planning on we're planning on killing him in a second. I'm gonna cast detect thoughts. I wanna know what she's thinking. Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious what she's thinking, <laughs> but I just want a little more insight. Uh, 12, negative one, plus one. We got it. Gerdal Iron Hand, I have lived for you, and now I'll die for you. Oh, she is ready to go. Um, are you sure that you want to do this? Once you're dead, that's it. It's over. Starring with the plus four and plus three rolls will persuade her a little bit. Damn nutter. You, you think I fear death? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Shit. Oh, okay, good. I can't do it. Hey, there you go. See, everything's Come fine. On. Drag me to moonrise. I'll make you cult nutters suffer. Uh, I, I literally just want that smoke powder barrel. Could I take that with me? You want to barter with rune powder? Yeah. Look, you have no idea what you're dealing with. Any true Iron Hand would trade their life for a grain of this stuff. I'll spare you a vial. Oh. Okay. We'll be we'll be gracious. Is a vial enough? What good is a single vial? I mean, I I want to I want to be grateful, but the whole, that fucking barrel is bigger than you. Give me more than a vial. A barrel of this could light up the underdark. A vial is plenty. Just let me go my way. All right, I accept. You threw it, you fucking madman! What are you gonna do now? <laughs> I go where there's shit to stir, and there's no shortage of options. I'm getting gone. You ought to do the same. Whoop. Well. <laughs> Bonus action dash. Time is frozen. Will I get blown up if I just steal this right now? Let's find out. Thank you. What path lies before me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're leaving, boys. Everybody out. Everybody out. Everybody leave. 
We'll just cruise right on out of here. Direct me. Gail, you might need to uh, go a little bit further. We'll see. Okay, we're ending our turn. <laughs> go. <laughs> All right. So we officially have enough explosives to level the Underdark. What could go wrong? We know the true soul near is near. The Myconoid colony gave us a quest to basically bring his head back. And Asterion is the one who agreed to do it. So Starion is going to approach Sergeant Thryn here, who appears to be in charge of the rescue operation. Heat up some rocks. Let's see how the little pricks do when we strap fire to their legs. Charming. Hell is truly where we make it. Move, Hoon. <laughs> I don't have time for drugnan outsiders. Oh, how's the dig going? Poorly, obviously. Tunnel collapsed on a true soul. Absolute's going to eat my liver. Now move. I've got no time for the parasite stares, but it's a mere tickle. You hear no thoughts or memories, just an echo of scars that never healed. A true soul, eh? Gives us wreck of a look I could have told me. Glad you're here to take responsibility. Tunnels collapsed, trapped true soul near. He's stuck in there with poisoned geezers. We don't get him out soon. Geezers. It's both our heads. The famous Nier. Subject of the Myconid's ire, no? He is. Why are you telling her that? Clearing that rubble's no easy feat. Do you have any ideas? Not a one. Unless you count tacking Aboleth fangs to my whipping cane. Sounds like you got a tough job ahead of you. Better hurry. You gonna just leave him in there to choke? Shit. <laughs> On the double, you prince, <laughs> before I carve my name into your arses. Well, we are going to take out, not the big one that we looted, but we should have a rune powder vial that we can place at the foot of this explode, uh, excuse me, at the foot of this rocky area. As we do that, all of the slaves know what's gonna happen. They move away. Now, was that enough damage? 38 is the high end, 44 on that. We're gonna need to put down another explosive next to it. That's just a smoke powder bomb uh, that we will place right there. I'm gonna save the game. I'm doing this fight the hardest way possible. And it might take me a couple tries, but I wanna really test my party right now. So let me also get max HP, close enough. How much does the big one do? 120? Oh, send to camp. Yeah, keep that safe. What are you waiting for? Okay, I just have the rune powder barrel. We're gonna see if just one is enough. The vial, excuse me. That was more than enough. God, did the rocks hit him? Well, there he is. someone else to free me. True soul, please, let me explain. Oh, they're having an argument already. Finally. Worthless slaves. Your incompetence has been my ruin. Nier does not fail. Well, actually, Nier already failed. You were locked in there. Should I tell him that? Um, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to sit here. Beldron! No! Oh. Well, I mean, I didn't know he was going to do that after. Well, crap. Thrin. The Absolute gave you everything. And this fiasco 
is how you reward her. Me and mine worked flat out. I was cracking the whip day and night. Tell him, true soul. Yep, she was... Yep, she, she did her best. Her best wasn't good enough, though. Is that okay with you? Your best was not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Near pities you, Thryn. Your errors and excuses. And your sorry end. What is he doing? I've never seen this. Is he just choking her out with his mind? Hells. Your skull buzzes, and you see your own face through Nier's eyes. Worthless. Every last one. Their failures must be punished. True soul, take their heads. The absolute commands it. So, this is interesting. If we say the only head I'm going to take is yours, I believe all the Dwegar fight me. I know they all fight me, but they fight me with him. What if I just, you know, like, thin the numbers a little bit? All right, if you insist. Show them no mercy. Their corpses will make a fine offering to our mistress. No way! The true soul is on my team! <gasps> I didn't know that was possible. Oh, poor Astarian is just sitting here in the middle of the thick of it all, too. Uh, we're going to pick up this Dwegar and throw him down there onto the scrying eye. That should kill both. <gasps> it didn't do any damage. I don't know why I thought it was going to kill him, but I did think it was going to kill the scrying eye. The scrying eye is an enemy here as well, but sh shouldn't... Sh would, would Nier want the scrying eye to see that? Shouldn't he be worried about that? Whoever's on the other side may not like this, is all I'm saying. Uh, we're going to follow up with a... Oh, that's my last flurry. Okay, we'll just do an offhand strike. That's going to do 13 damage. Five more health remaining on the first of the Dwegar. This is a level one shield to protect Gale. We don't want too much damage stacking up on him early in the fight. Although this is very likely to be the easiest version of this fight I have ever done with True Soul Nier on our side. Astarian is going to cast Crown of Madness. Who's the target gonna be? 42% chance on a few of these guys. Let's try to get Thud. Saved. Damn it, bro. Well, I'm gonna run to my new best friend, True Soul Nier. He'll protect me, I'm sure of it. The Dwegar, who was thrown from the rafters, slowly gets to their feet. If they move away from Kalark, they're gonna get hit really hard. We see Hunter's Mark being used on True Soul Nier, and they attempt to shoot him after. Very unique choice. I don't think I would have done that, not while being threatened. I would have just disengaged and run for the hills. Can't do that anymore, though, as Lazel moves down the ladder and slices her into pieces. I went ahead and took care of the scrying eye. I am kind of surprised that True Soul Nier doesn't have a problem with that because at the end of the day, they are resources from the Absolute. But while I have the opportunity to take it down without anyone being mad at me, I want to do it. Uh, Kalark was just mind-controlled. They have mind-controlled the strongest and smartest Githyanki in all of Vlacket's army. Is that a concentration on someone? It seems as though it is. Gale prepares a fireball from the rafters. Four enemies inside the targeted area. He lets it rip for the first time. Concentration was broken. Kalark snaps back to reality. He just had a, a trailing thought for a moment. Uh, that fireball did kill off one of the Mind Masters. That's going to make this fight a lot easier. A big old smash mostly misses Lazel. Do we want to shield again? I think she can take the hit. Yeah, three damage. That's no big deal at all. 
True Soul Nier approaches our party. Wicked Coercion has been cast. He's mind controlling his own men and having them fight each other. Is there a class that could do that? Is there, is there a, could someone let me know? Could I play Nier with his abilities? Is that possible? Cause that seems like fucking, that's so cool. This guy's not raging, right? He has a reckless attack, which actually means I have a better chance of hitting him. So let's run up and do a topple. The topple did not knock him down, but we'll follow up with a staff hit or two. I took the scenic route to the other side and that will end our turn. Our coerced friend fires off a shot into the ground nearby and then entangles another one of the Dwegar before continuing to run away. We are going to cast Dissonant Whispers onto the Barbarian here. 65% chance of connecting, only four damage being done. Lazel then swings her greatsword, cleaving directly through the body of the Dwegar in front of us. She follows up with another one. And if she had her way, she has another great weapon master swing in the chamber. But too many enemies are too far away. I suppose I could have hit this guy because that coercion is going to end at some point. But while they are fighting for us, they are pretty valuable. We are going to fire bolt from the rafters onto the stone guard Kerr, who is on the northern side of this fight. 12 damage connecting to they're back. Trusel near running further into the area. Dissonant Whispers being cast again, showing Astarian how it's done. Nine damage connecting and a fear as well as one of our enemies goes invisible. Well, while the coercion is still in play, we might as well take advantage of it. We'll toss this guy into <laughs> the fucking lava. Uh, we could... Throw a javelin here as well to secure a second kill on this turn. <gasps> or we'll critically miss. Oh my god. Ensnaring strike going out on True Soul Near. It does miss, but the follow up attack connects. We're going to try to kill this guy with an insult. You're a foul deformity. Oh, that was enough to make him fall over dead. Uh, I'm pretty sure the guy's right here, so I'm just gonna like... He's not there. He's not there. He's around here somewhere. We'll find him. Mage armor on True Solnir. How does he use mage armor to get more than 13 AC? I thought that was just the cap. I didn't know dexterity could come into play with that at all. He has detected the presence! Well, that was very helpful. After Nier's turn, it was the enemy that was hiding, and they fire all of their shots off at Nier himself. I'm going to pick up this enemy and toss him over to Lazel, who is then going to cut them I into two see. smaller pieces. This was meant to be a simple operation. I arrive, those pack animals clear the debris, and I walk into the temple. Instead, I've been beset by incompetence treachery and now this the absolute's business remains unfinished unfortunate uh i'm not gonna say how does that concern me because for all intents and purposes we're able to blend in with the cult of the absolute because we have the mind flayer parasite so what business is that exactly let's try to learn some more information important business my orders come from General Thorn himself. Really? I need you to deliver a message to him. Tell the General that I did what I could, but that the route through Grimforge is impassable. Well, I guess first tell me what happened to this place. When the General entrusted me with this mission, he warned there may be some damage caused by a monster let loose in the temple. He never mentioned this. <laughs> Where can I find the general? The general resides at Moonrise Towers, but you cannot simply travel there. The land surrounding the towers is blighted by a deadly curse. If that's the case, how do I reach it safely? I had a moon lantern to keep the curse at bay. 
Alas, the rocks did it in. There is another way, though. We have allies on the surface. Seek them out, and play this lyre to call on their guide. Whatever you do, do not attempt the journey to Moonrise without his protection. I promise you it will not end well. Hey, that's a great tip. Well, uh, I guess I'll be on my way. I'll tell the general what happened here. Do not tarry. I will see you again, but only when my work is done. I can still reach the temple and fulfill the general's orders. His advisor, Balthazar, also sought a way. I'll pick up his trail and follow him. Prove myself his superior. I am generous to those who aid him. When I return to Moonrise, I will be triumphant. And you will share in my victory. I am so morbidly curious to see what happens. Gift from the Absolute. While the illithid parasite inside is veiled from those looking at this jar, you can feel the expectant, delicious thrum of its psionic potential. Do you think he would like fuck with Balthazar if we let him live and let him go to act act two? I'm actually really curious. Uh, the party minus Astari and groups up and moves literally any fucking where that's not here. Don't waste a step. Meanwhile. There they go. Let's just take a quick look. Let's just take a qu Just a quick look, that's all. Just a very quick look into his pockets. I don't have an action. That's so stupid. Oh, 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 yes, yes, of course. Yes, hello. Hello. Good, good day, sir. That's kind of bad. Oh, I want those boots. Yeah, give me those boots. Seems thievery is not permitted here. Unfortunately for you, killing thieves is positively encouraged. It didn't work. I'm going to talk my myself out of this. Uh... Um, this belongs to me. How dare you accuse me of stealing it? Those are my boots, you motherfucker. The gas in there clearly fucked with your brain. Just, oh, fuck me. <laughs> okay, let's try that one again. Let's try that one again. Yeah, I think we got that. You're free to go this time. But next time, you won't be so lucky. Well, let's see where that rabbit hole takes us. I'm very curious to see what kind of effect... You're not fooling anyone. <laughs> I'm very curious to see what kind of effect leaving True Soul near alive will have on Act 2. Our party has traveled back on the other shore of the Underdark. And we are making our way to the southeast. In this area full of explosive mushrooms, we've managed to squeeze by, and we're gonna try to make our way into the arcane tower now. Scorched ground. Better watch out. Yeah. Astarian has already noticed something fishy going on here. And as the game enters turn-based mode on its own, I think Gale may have noticed as well, since a beam was pointing straight at his abdomen. There are defenses in place here that, if we are not careful, will rip us apart. Palark, the strongest, smartest of all of the Githyanki, can take cover behind that pillar and break line of sight. What are these things, though? These are arcane turret constructs. They have slashing and piercing resistance. You know what I don't see on this list? is bludgeoning. Oh, fuck, 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 Everything's fine. Everything's not fine. Everything's not fine. Fix it. Fix it. 
God, I hate the party move. That ruined everything. Just split up my party permanently. I'll just micro all of them. I want to unequip my weapon, if I can. I want to see how much damage we're pumping out with just our fists right now. And I'm going to have to make my way up to this thing and hit it if I can. Looks like a Starion might get shot. We're okay. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world because of how far away it is. But if I can... Maybe I can hide behind this thing over on the left. I'm going to bonus action dash that way. And we'll hide here. What? <laughs> Something burrowed in there. Something big. Was that a visual bug? Because it didn't do any damage. And it's not its turn. Oh, how wonderful. I love that. Oh, how nice. How nice. I'm going to beat the shit out of this thing. Come here. Take this too. You motherfucker. Get out of here. Did something come back? Okay, I'm going to assume that's just a result of the turn-based mode. We're going to creep up on this other one here as well. Re-enter turn-based mode. And we'll slap the shit out of this one, too. Offhand strike should do it. Okay, they're both down. Our party regathers, and we begin to make our way inside of a mysterious arcane tower. This was the location that Omelum told us to head back to in search of two mushrooms that may be able to help him inspect the parasite of Astarium. There are more of these sentries inside, so we're going to hop over the gate here and start to move in to take care of this problem once again with Kalark. Turn base mode one more time as soon as I am able to. And I can almost move all, I can move all the way up. We can get a swing in this turn. Now this place is pretty cool. There's a lot going on here. There's like hidden magic chests that Am I okay? That you can uncover. There are puzzles that can only be solved with certain other items. And I'll try to walk you through it pretty quickly. We're going to turn base mode one more time. We're going to dash and take cover inside of this area. I don't think this guy could shoot through there. End our turn. As soon as we can do it again, we'll walk up. And the perfect. Take, you first. take the turret down. Ooh, critical hit almost. I did do it in one blow. I smacked it senseless. All right, everyone should be able to come inside now. The door is still locked, but there's a lever on the side that should let them in. Now, as far as finding the mushrooms in question, that is going to be one of the easiest tasks we could hope to accomplish. All we have to do is go to the center elevator and we are going to descend. It looks like some kind of magical contraption. Just... Now to get it to work. Oh. Well, I guess it will be a little more complicated. The elevator in the center is turned off. If only there was a way to turn it back on. We'll never solve this puzzle now. We're gonna cast Featherfall. We're gonna split Kalark off from the rest of the group and plummet down to the earth very, very quickly. If he's not a coward, are you afraid? It does not want me to jump from here. It is not having it. That angle is not working. <laughs> That's sad because he's a monk, dude. I could survive this without slow fall 100%. We would reduce the damage so much it wouldn't even matter. I say that, but I'm never going to test it. First jump out to the mushrooms. Second jump down to the floor, please. Perfect. Now, if we make our way out back. Is this, is this door locked? Let's see if I can open it. We're going to grab one of these susser blooms. These are a very rare flower found here in the Underdark. And these susser blooms 
basically stop all magic from happening in an area around them. So if I'm holding this in my inventory, I wouldn't be able to cast spells right now. That's not their only property though. You can put them inside this generator and the magical aura around the flower will be enough to power this entire facility. Which is pretty cool, by the way. Whoever's wizard tower this is, he was thinking smart. Now, I don't know for how long this will power the tower. I don't know if his production of susser blooms outside is really enough, but. This place really comes to life. And you get to peek at who is hanging out on the top floor. Well, now that we have everything operational, there are some items that I'm going to need to find in here. And one of them is a ring. I don't know where that ring is. We might have to do some genuine exploration here. But for now, we can use the middle area to actually ascend. And the first area we get to go to has sprouting Timask spores already harvested for us in the corner. These are one of the mushrooms we needed for the quest. The other side of the room may also have some tongue of madness, the other mushroom required for the experiment. We'll go ahead and gather both. On the level that we entered the tower in, there is a chest of mundane up here. This chest does not have a health bar, so you can't destroy it, which should be your first clue that it's not that mundane. With the chest in hand, I'm going to make my way back down to the lower area where we got the Susser Bloom from before. There's a really cool interaction with this chest in particular where if I was to set it down and open it right now, inside looks like just cups and spatulas and bowls, really nothing of interest at all. But if we take this bloom, and do we have to place it inside or just be in the aura? It's just the aura around it. It allows us to get some pretty cool items. Scroll protection versus good and evil, mage armor, gold ingots, heart light bombs and Mistra's Grace, some boots that give Featherfall as a spell. Now get this out of my inventory, please. Look at this handsome man, one floor above the entrance. The portrait of Marcus Miles, my beast. Do you remember that was over the bed on our last playthrough? Because I couldn't, I couldn't loot it, right? Do they move that? Am I crazy? Well, there are a lot of books in this place that allow you to get a non-violent resolution to the confrontation happening on the roof. I have not found that book. So instead, I'm just gonna beat the crap out of the boss up top. Certainly. The current theory is they give us a ring that then allows us to go into a secret place here inside of the tower. Just in case I'm wrong, I am gonna quick save right now. I'm not above that. Um, there is a way to kind of cheese this fight. However, I don't know if I can do it. Let's ascend one level with our team. New sounds to the dampened like a pressure break. Is it the foul? The foul contemptuous heel. Out of my way! I'm not interested in y'all riddles. An unbeknownst command by fools that would intrude. Now steel shall ring, false tongue will speak no more. Well, look at that, Kalark, at the start of the turn order, we're going to move next to Bernard, the guardian of the Enchanted Tower, and we're going to do a pushing attack. He did not get pushed. 
Let's follow up with a melee strike, only hitting for six. We follow up with another one once again, only hitting for six. Astaria doesn't have too much he can really offer right now. I am gonna give a Bardic Inspiration to Lazelle because I want her to land her attack more. And I believe that Bardic Inspiration gives her a higher chance to hit. Only 40% with Great Weapon Master off. Oh. Okay, let's try a fairy fire as well. Or is Bardic my main action? I thought that was a bonus action. Have I done anything else? I don't have any spell slots. Shit. All right, we shoot. Two damage, nice. And then I'm gonna try to threaten this guy over on the left. We're not even gonna make it the whole way. Now we see Kalark step to the side just a tad and Lazelle approach. She does, isn't going to do anything fancy. She's just going to swing the sword. First one connects for one. It looked like it almost stunned him for a second. We swing again. The connected for nine. Action surge. He dodged. He did not dodge. And now we're going to see if we can push this guy. Unfortunately, he's pretty heavy. He's not moving that far off that roof. And we are all going to end our turns. What's his follow-up gonna be? Enemy is moving out of range. Attack of opportunity does not connect. We see a main hand swing from Bernard. Another attack of opportunity, this time from Kalark, as he turns his back to him. And that will end his turn. Cutting words could save me from a little damage here, so we'll do it. The ranged hit directly in front of Astarian does hit him very, very hard, though. Uh, we are gonna give haste to Kalark. God save you. <laughs> then uh, Gale's gonna descend <laughs> to protect that concentration. And we're gonna end our turn. All right, and here he comes, the lean, green, mean, killing machine. Goes for a swing. Bernard dodges, we go again. Bernard takes the hit, we go again. We go again. And then follow that up with, I'm gonna do a toppling flurry. And that's gonna be enough to take the boss down. Then with the rest of Kalark's turn, we're going to give disadvantage on ranged attacks to this guy over here. We're gonna see Asterion move a little bit closer to this guy and just vicious mockery. We're trying to threaten him as well. Although he's not threatened by me standing there. I don't know what that says about Astarian. And then uh, we are going to see Lazelle move up here. And I was hoping I'd be able to swing from here, unfortunately, just a little too out of my range. Not too happy with that. The biggest threat is already taken down. 33 HP on these guys is not that big of a deal at all. And we will conclude our turns. We see some more ranged attack coming towards Asteri and four damage taken to the side of the head. But everything else, he miraculously dodged. We're gonna see Gale come back. Hello, everyone. I'm from Waterdeep and I fucked Mistra. That's what he says as he came up. And then he just goes ahead and whiffs that spell before descending again. Uh, looks like Lazel dodged both of those attacks. We're seeing Kalark dodge as well. Speaking of Kalark, we are going to swing. Swing. Swing one more time. Hey, Tim. And if I could run over here. Oh, we sure can. We will give this armor the greatest gift of all being thrown off a gigantic tower. <laughs> I can't throw him that far. How far can I throw him? I can at least throw him down a couple levels, right? Surely. Looks like just one. And that was not enough to kill him. That means Gale's gonna have a friend down there. Astarian might be able to help moving to the edge of the platform. He fires a range attack down there. That's eight damage. That is enough. Now, to finish off my turn, I'm going to Githyanki Misty Step directly next to the archer over here to threaten them. Lazelle's pulling out her gigantic blade and swinging for the stands as she hits the animated armor for half of its health in a single blow. We see the animated armor next to Kalark missing both of its attacks. Gale is once again going to return something about the weave and how strong it is. On the Iron Torch, Gale lit the Iron Torch so that Kalark could see better and then descends back in the elevator floor beneath the confrontation. <laughs> 
Lazelle's had enough of that. She swings at the animated armor. It does miss, and we're just gonna pick him up and throw him closer to Kalark. That misses as well. That is horrible. What's wrong with you? Push him. There you go. Was that so hard? Clark sees that happening, and he's just going to stop attacking the one next to him so he can prove a point to Lazel. This is 100% showing off right now. That is literally all that was. And then he's going to run back over here and deal with his own problems, too. Come on, Lazel. It wasn't that difficult. Critical miss. Don't you worry. We have one more in the chamber. Nice. If we loot Bernard's body, he should have a ring called the Guiding Light. If we equip this and then cast it on ourselves. Must have been linked to that button. Oh, I don't have an item. <laughs> if we equip it and then cast it on ourselves. We should be able to see a new button form on the elevator. I don't know where it forms though. This kind of happened to me last time where my character was like, oh, look at that. But I never saw it. Oh. Oh, is this it? This is it. Oh, my haste ended. I was like, why can't I move? Why am I lethargic? So this room, we didn't see in our original playthrough. It has a staff of arcane blessing inside. It also has even more spores inside of it as well. Not that we need them. Not that we need any more mushrooms. The gilded chest here has the scroll of blink as well as the sparks wall, which makes you immune to being electrocuted. There are definitely some builds that could benefit a lot from that. We see a scroll of flaming sphere. And unless I am mistaken, maybe it's not on this floor. I believe there are some Githyanki manuscripts around here somewhere. And I wanted to read them if I could. They might be in the normal castle. Whoa, scroll of fly in here as well. There is some really good stuff. And remember, every single scroll that we find, our wizard can retain as a spell for the rest of our adventuring career. Where's the staff? Oh, there it is. Staff of Arcane Blessing. Bless grants an additional 1d4 to saving throws and weapon attack rolls and an additional 2d4 to spell attack rolls. That is really good. That is so good. I kind of want to give that to Astarian for reasons you will see in the future. I don't even know if he can use staffs and he also already has that pretty cool sword. I don't want to take anything away from that sword, but that's a really good setup for us. I mean, think about it. If you miss your attack, you don't deal any damage. So anything that helps you hit that attack is going to be super beneficial. And that gives it an extra 1d4. So it makes it even more likely that you're going to land your attacks. That's actually insane. Here we go. Oral histories of the Gith and Mind Flayers, as well as an engraved Githyanki disc. This is one floor away from the top. Let's see what this says. This book comprises several chapters, one for each cited source. It claims to contain firsthand transcriptions of the oral histories of several storytellers throughout the realm. Chapter four, Palador the Swift, 700 years of age, wood elf storyteller hailing from the wood of sharp teeth. It took me several 10 day of quiet habitation in the wood before the vulnerable Palador felt comfortable revealing his presence to me. The longer I stayed demonstrating I was no threat to his health and peace, the more open he was to gentle inquiry. This tale relayed to me on a chilly morning as we stoked a small fire between us was like none I had ever heard before or since. I asked if it were fiction and he insisted emphatically it were true as his own right eye long ago before my eyes and ears before your lonesome quill dear scribe there was an empire of people or perhaps only belief an empire of brain eaters soul wasters they called themselves illithids the flayers of mind 
The children of Gith were bowed, bent in service to the flares, a passionate people made to serve a cold belief. The flares were untouchable, their minds a great oppressor. No proud will or passion could break Gith Yankee, or could break Gith's children free. Until at last, a reckoning, its source unknown, its power unproven, but its events history making. The code would not be cracked. Gith's children fought back valiantly, their freedom theirs. The flayers bent and broken until today. Now that is a good book. We're gonna pick that one up. What does the engraved disc it's say? From slate and engraved with Tiersu. The markings look familiar, but you can make no sense of their logic or structure. Without a cipher or primer to aid you, the disc's message could be near impossible to discern. Well, I'm going to call in my Githyanki history. Recall your language lessons. Try to arrange the symbols in a coherent order. We need a 12 for this, and we have every advantage one could hope for. And we needed it. I think we still hit it with a 13, just barely. You recall a method your ancestors used to conceal information from its illithid slavers and apply it to the disc. From the symbols, a pattern forms. And from that pattern, a story emerges. The Prince of the Comet, part one. So it was that we were free from gake shackles and turned our blades on each other. The heavens were shattered, and one great empire was divided in two. Gith traveled to the Hells to broker help for her people, her cause. Vlakith would have you believe Mother Gith proclaimed her our queen. Lies. Gith made no such <gasps> proclamation. Vlakith seized the empire against the mother's wishes. But Gith had nurtured a son, Orpheus, Prince of the Comet, the true heir. He knew Vlakith's treachery. Orpheus rallied Gith's honor guard and declared the throne for himself. The War of the Comet had begun. You've heard tell of the prince who betrayed Vlakith, but these writings accuse Vlakith of betraying Gith herself. No wonder the tale was so expertly encoded. Lazel will surely want to know of this. I bet she will. She's marked with tear soup. But I can't decipher them. We're going to save so that for next episode. For now, we have everything we need from this location. Astarian's going to gather the party and venture back to the Myconoid colony, at which we are going to stand very still as a party to not see what's on the other side of this corner. Remember, Astarian's the only one who set foot in this place, and he's going to let Omelum know that we found the mushrooms. I greet you, child of the dark. How has your search for the mushrooms fared? It's weird that the bard options aren't even related. I found the mushrooms you were looking for. These are fine specimens. It will only take me a moment this to brew them like to proper potency. Omelium turns away to prepare the potion, lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draft. I can make no promises as to its taste. Okay, we'll try. Drink the potion. The potion is disgusting beyond description. The only mercy is that it goes down quickly. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid, but trapped like a creature suspended in amber. Hmm. Draw on your willpower to resist. It's a wisdom saving throw. We need a 10. We roll a... 13, no modifiers. That is just a 13. We did it. Dark holes bite at the edges of your vision, but the void cannot draw you in. The temple spasms, seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. 
Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it means to hollow out your skull. See if I have any advantages in any, any of these. No, I don't. It's just straight up wisdom rolls or an intelligence one. Resist the panic from within or drown out the tadpole by focusing on a tune that is a bard kind of thing to do. Down, down, down by the river. Oh, it was enough. It was enough. It was enough. The cold blades lose their edge. You are stalwart, turning that tide of fear against itself. The parasite swells with power, more power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeluum, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. I felt it grow inside me. It's more powerful now than it ever was before. Such an outcome was not in my calculations. There is more to this being than mere stasis. So I went through all of this and the tadpole is still lodged in my brain. Indeed. Although I may have another solution, albeit a temporary one. I possess a ring of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? I mean, I could just buy it. Perform the tale of adventure so far. The Ballad of Brains, Brine Pools, and Balderdash. So I'm basically saying give me the ring for free because I'm performing for you. Let's see how that works out. Plus four from Charisma. Oh, it's looking good. It's looking real good. We got a 12. Once all of our modifiers were added, it was a 23. As a mellow one watches your performance, something stirs in his mind. Unusual for an illithid. Joy. Here. <laughs> it is yours. You made me happy. You can have may the ring. It serve you as well as it has served me. Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. Now, the real reason I, you, I needed to talk to him is because after you complete his, trust, his quest, Omelum starts to sell you the Ring of Salving. You restore an additional two hit points every time you heal another creature. Considering how many different ways we have of healing with a star in, I thought that would be a fantastic pickup. The mind shielding is just, you know, it added little benefit. I believe that's going to do it for us today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. We have a little tiny bit more to do in the Underdark before we leave for the high road. And, well, once we get there, the train is not going to go back to the station for a while. Events are going to be set in motion that we will not be able to stop. So for a moment, we'll take a deep breath and enjoy our surroundings. I'll see you guys again next time. Take care.